Okay, so here's a demo uh, of running uh, the PS3 Linux kernel and uh, system on uh, PS3 with firmware version 3.41. Uh, for those who haven't been following, I have been working on a project which uses the exploit that was uh, pioneered by the PS3 jailbreak device um, to essentially run Linux, except instead of as uh, other OS, I'm not trying to boot other OS on the PS3, I'm actually using Linux as game OS. So since, uh, you know, other OS and game OS are really just two different modes on the PS3, um, you can basically just run Linux as game OS, and uh, you know the interface to the hypervisor is the same, and it pretty much just works. The uh, the trick is to uh, use the exploit to take control over game OS, and uh, actually wipe it out, replace it with Linux uh, dynamically. So you know, um, I use the exploit, and then uh, you know stomp all over uh, game OS, uh, stop all game OS activity, and replace and load Linux on top of it. Now, um, just to prove my point, uh, here's my PS3. It's hooked up to this monitor here. I'm going to just turn it on normally, unplug uh, anything weird from it, and, uh, you know, just to show that this is firmware version 3.41. Uh, this keyboard here, which is ironically a PS2 keyboard, uh, is hooked up to the PS3, and it's booting up. And uh, let's log in. Let's go system settings. And system info. So, this is from version 3.41, right? And now you know my Mac address, of course. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off, turn off the PS3. And since this is going to happen pretty quickly, I'm going to tell you about it first. So, I have two windows here. Uh, this is a, this is the console, and uh, this window here is just a, a simple terminal that's showing debug messages that are broadcast by the PS3 onto the network. So I'm using the Ethernet port as a debugging mechanism, uh, both for Asbestos, which is the name of my Linux bootloader, and uh, Linux itself. Um, so that's just uh, going to show messages coming from the PS3 through the Ethernet port. This window here is actually a window, a terminal into my exploit device. Um, the uh, firmware version 3.41 exploit is based, uh, as you may know, on USB devices. So you need some kind of programmable USB device to um, implement it. I am using this uh, iJEP V2 board, which is a board with a TI uh, OMAP3 processor. It's the same processor that's used on the Palm Pre, the Nokia N900, and uh, the Motorola Droid, and the Open Pandora console, and a few other devices. But you could use uh, any other a device that you know has been used to implement this exploit or could potentially be used. So uh, you get, there's a, already a port of uh, this bootloader to the iPod, the I believe the classic ones, and uh, you could also um, there's also a port for the Arduino, and there should be a port coming up soonish for uh, USB AVR devices. The Arduino port is for software USB, not hardware. So you could use you know a TNZ or a, yeah, a USB. This is an AVR stick. Um, you need at least 64 kilobytes of memory, but you could. Uh, load uh, this bootloader from an external memory. So there's a port for the um, Arduino Mega, and then there's a port for uh, some older Arduino with less memory that actually uses an external EEPROM memory to store the, the bulk of the code. So uh, if you have a USB device like I do here, well, uh, you can run it. The nice thing about this one is that it has an Ethernet port, so I can just log into it and see everything happening in real time. So this uh, window here is just an SSH connection to that board, which uh, runs Linux. And it's uh, running the exploit code, which is a, a reference implementation that I wrote. But, you know, this part uh, could be replaced with any other implementation. It doesn't really matter. Um, so what you do is uh, you turn on the PS3 with the power and eject combination. And that um, starts game OS. It starts loading, and it triggers the exploit. Uh, the exploit uh, you know, initially, you know, just uh, works like all the other exploits. But instead of uh, leaving a patch into a, a game OS, what it does is it... Uh, completely replaces it. It uses GameOS uh, USB services to load a second stage. So stage one triggers directly through the exploit. Uh, it uses GameOS to load stage two, and stage two then uh, starts the process of booting Linux and takes over GameOS. Now, uh, what's going to happen is this is going to uh, load the USB exploit, run stage one, you're going to see all the messages here. Stage one is going to show a few quick messages at the end, uh, saying it's loading stage two. Once stage two loads, stage two uses uh, Ethernet debugging. At this point, um, there's no USB stack because GameOS has been destroyed effectively. It's no longer in memory. So USB activity ceases and it switches over to Ethernet. It's going to show some debug messages, then bring up the network, and by that I mean actual IP. It uses debugging before bringing up the IP network. So it's going to use a DHCP server to query for uh, 
an IP address and a server, and it's, then it's going to use the TFTP protocol to load a Linux kernel image from that server, which is this computer, of course. Um, so you're going to see it load the Linux, Linux kernel, and then it's going to jump into it. Um, the Linux kernel itself is patched to also debug through Ethernet in the same way, so it's going to keep scrolling kernel messages here really quickly. It's you know almost instant. And then it's going to bring up the network, and once it does that, you won't see anything else because once Linux brings up the network, uh, the debugging um, driver for the Ethernet you know, just shuts down. So Linux is set up to boot with an NFS root file system, which means uh, the Linux root file system is actually held on this computer and is being streamed in real time through Ethernet to the PS3. Uh, so Linux is going to do that behind the scenes. You won't see anything yet because the frame buffer driver has a small glitch that means it will not um, work for the first few seconds of Linux boot. So uh, Linux will stop uh, showing debug messages. It'll start running the user space uh, file system. It'll start booting up a Gen 2 Linux image, which is what I have loaded into my computer. Uh, once that, that happens, and in a few seconds, you will actually see uh, the frame buffer driver initialize on this monitor, and uh, you know it'll finish booting up. So let's give it a try. It's plugging the exploit device to the PS3. Turn it on with the, well, you need to flip the back power switch first. Turn it on with uh, the combination. And wait a few seconds. So first, the exploit. Let's show it a few seconds here. There it goes. At stage one, at stage two, it's loading the kernel, that's the kernel, and now nothingness for a few seconds while the frame buffer driver uh, gets its act together. But it is booting Gen 2 right now uh, in the background. And there we go. That's a Gen 2 Linux boot process. You saw, uh, you may have catched the seven SPs at the top there, not six as uh, is usual. Uh, it's actually seven when running under game OS, so you get an extra SP. And once that finishes, Almost there. There we go. Let's see if I can log in a little bit. PS3. Oh, wait, no. I'm an idiot. Username root. Password PS3. And there we go. So, just scat proxy view info. And there you have it. The two threaded uh, cell broadband engine processor, and I have you know I have uh, the just the basics here. It does networking. It does uh, you know I have all the SP tools and toolchain installed. So it's basically a PS3 Linux installed just that it's running through uh, netbooting from this computer, um, and it even halts. You can even turn the power off, and it actually shuts down Linux. Um, so at this stage, this is uh, I think this is useful enough that other people might be interested. I've been uh, tweeting about it, and um, but you know uh, I, I'll, pro uh, I'll post some information about it on my blog soon, uh, so that other people can try it. You only really need this best as a compatible device, or you can port it to your own device. It's, it's really easy. If you, if you have a device that has 64k of internal or external memory and uh, can run you know PS Groove or some other PS3 payload, you can just replace the payload and add a few uh, instructions to implement the stage two thing, which is really really trivial, and um, run as best as. And uh, for Linux kernel, you only you can use a vanilla PS3 Linux kernel. You do not need any special patches unless you want this debug uh, terminal thing. I have a few patches for that on my Git repository, if you want them. Um, and as for Asbestos itself, it's on my server, and you can just download and build it. With a you know that even comes with a toolchain script that you can use to make a PS3 toolchain. So um, I'll go post that in a in a short while, and uh, see you. Next time, maybe with, I don't know, proper graphics or something. We're still trying to figure out how 3D works, but 3D should be available. I mean, this is essentially game OS, so of course it has 3D support. We just need to figure out how to use it. So, see you in a while.